In this video, we're going to be taking a look at our very first sample project with our Easy Stone Macro, and we're going to show you how to create a baseball. Now, I know that you're super eager to get started with Easy Stone, but I'm going to encourage you as much as I possibly can to watch these first few quick start videos. Watch them through beginning to end, maybe a couple of times over, to really get a basic grasp of some of the various features in CorelDRAW, some of the various features in EasyStone, so that you'll be less frustrated when you go to start doing your own work. And trust me, we've designed these videos to show you some neat, fun things in CorelDRAW that maybe you never knew existed, or in EasyStone that you've never seen demonstrated in some of our other videos, to really give you a very good start to working with EasyStone. So again, I beg you, watch these quick start videos because you're going to get a lot of information out of them. Now, in this video, we're going to be creating a baseball. Now, there are probably a hundred ways to create a baseball, but what we're going to do is we're going to design it in a very specific way just to kind of broaden your horizon and thinking outside the box of some of the various tools inside CorelDRAW that we can take advantage of and really begin our work here in Easy Stone. So let me show you what we're going to do. So the first thing we need to do for our baseball is simply draw a box. And then once we have our box drawn, we're going to draw a circle. So we'll go ahead and grab our ellipse tool here over here in Corel Draw, and we'll draw a circle. Now if we hold our control key down, we can constrain our circle to a perfect circle rather than an ellipse. Now once we have that, we can actually come up here and define an object size. So I'm going to choose 4 and hit enter, and as I do, notice that this value did not change. The height value did not change with my width value. And why is that? Well, because by default, this little tiny lock is not locked. And when we click on that lock, see it says lock ratio. So now when I change this value to 4, now you can see that the vertical value also changed to 4. I'm going to switch back over here to my pick tool. And I'm going to come outside my rectangle and draw a big swath. Now I have both my rectangle and my ellipse selected, right? So here's our first keyboard shortcut for CorelDRAW. Memorize these because it will save you a lot of productivity. If we hit the C key on our keyboard, what does that do? It centers all of the objects that we have currently selected. The center point of every object is now centered. Now if you look at our circle, you can see that it's offset a little bit on the vertical center, but the horizontal center spot on. So to do vertical centers, we simply hit the E key on our keyboard. And now you can see that our circle is directly centered over our rectangle. Now you might be wondering, what in the world does a rectangle have to do with a baseball? And the answer to that is absolutely nothing. But if you stick with me, you'll see why we have to have this rectangle. All right, so the next thing that we need to do then is to take our ellipse, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate it. The easiest way to duplicate an object that is selected here in CorelDRAW is simply hit the plus key on our keyboard. Now, if you look over here in the object manager, that's why I always like to have my object manager uh, open and visible, you can see that we have two ellipses. And I'm just gonna use my arrow keys for this example. And if I hold my shift key and my arrow key, it'll move a little bit faster. See that? And what we're going to do is kind of overlap it like this. So imagine if we're looking at a baseball, we've got our baseball, and this area right here, okay, this area right here is the stitches in the baseball. Now I'm going to make my rectangle bigger. Now, I've designed this video. I have to remind this to you again. I've designed this video and we're going through these steps specifically for a reason. And I want to point these things out as we go through them because it'll start to make a lot of sense to you. Because when you start designing your other design work, you're going to say, oh yeah, I remember that little shortcut I, I, I learned in the very first video I watched. Now, if I select my rectangle, I could grab one of these control handles and make it bigger, right? 
pretty simple. But remember earlier we went through that painstaking process of centering the circle to the rectangle? Well, we did that for a reason. We don't know what that reason is yet. I'm, gonna, I'm about to show you what that reason is. But right now we don't know what that reason is. We just know that we need to keep our circle centered to the rectangle, but I need to make my rectangle bigger. And the reason I need to make my rectangle bigger because the next step that we're going to do, it this rectangle needs to encompass both of these ellipses. And right now you can see that the rectangle does not. And I did that for a very specific reason because I wanted to show you this little detail. If we hold the shift key down and we pull from a corner what that does, watch what happens. See how it pulls from both sides. So my circle horizontally is still perfectly centered. Now I have a bigger rectangle that encompasses both ellipses like I need it to, but it kept my circle dead center. All right, so just little tiny things that we'll pick up as we go that you'll find will be very useful to you later on. All right, so now this circle that we have over here, what we need to do is we need to copy that circle. Let me just show you how this goes. Let's just copy that circle. But this, this little space right here needs to be exactly the same as it is over here. Well, how do we do that? How do I know, how do I move that circle over to the right and have the exact same overlap that I have on the left? I don't know how to do that, right? So that's what we're going to show you how to do it exactly. So we're just going to duplicate this ellipse and you already remember that from earlier, right? What do you have to do? You have to hit the plus key on our keyboard to make an exact duplicate. And you can see over here in the object manager we have now one, two, three ellipses. If I hold my shift key down and select my rectangle, now you can see I have my ellipse and my rectangle selected. So now what happens because my rectangle is dead center of this original ellipse or the baseball when I use that mirror option it's gonna mirror from the center point of my rectangle because it's the bigger object and when it does that it mirrors over and the offset is exactly the same on the right as the offset we had on the left now we don't need a rectangle because a rectangle has no business in baseball, right? So now, the next thing we need to do is we need to kind of separate, if you will, we need to separate the three regions of our baseball because we have our baseball and then we have our uh, the stitching in the baseball that we need to separate. Now, typically, in order to get down to the three shapes we would need, typically we would use the shaping tools in CorelDRAW to get there. But I did want to illustrate one other tool that I love to use and sometimes I can't find a good reason to use it, but this one is a good reason to use it. So let me show you what that tool is. And that tool is right over here called Smart Fill. And think of Smart Fill is like a crayon for a coloring book. When I click in the middle of our baseball, what Smart Fill will do is it makes a new shape and it filled in just that center part of our baseball. And I go ahead and click over here and click over here. And now we have three brand new shapes. So if I come over here to my object manager and delete these three ellipses, now you can see that we have three shapes to our baseball, right? Now, what's going to happen? when we add stones to the center part of this. Well, let's just go ahead and click Add Stones. See what we get? We get stones, right? If I click on this shape and I click Add Stones, what do we get? We get stones. So if this shape was sitting right on top of there, what would we have right here? Stones on top of stones, right? So obviously we don't want that. So what we have to do is we have to modify these two outer shapes to not include a portion of them. And to do that, we would use our node editing tool. So we come up here to our shape tool, click on this shape right here, and let me just zoom in here. I know you can't see this very well. Let's go no fill. So click on this little X for no fill. 
and see that little arrow right there that means there's a node that exists there I'm gonna click on that node and come to the editing tab and choose break at node and what that does is it now separates that node from the other one see that there so now I can just delete that and now I just have half a shape which is what I need same thing over here let's do no fill let's click on this node let's break at node and then select that node and delete it and so now I have half a shape now over here I don't need to delete those nodes so we're just gonna leave those right where they're at so now let's come over here and let's just slide this right back we can snap from node to node so we're gonna snap from the end node of this to the end node of that okay and for our center shape we're gonna do no fill as well because we don't need that so now you can kinda of see how our baseball is coming together so back over here on the stone tab we have this detect corner option but let me show you what happens here let's pull this shape out make a duplicate of it what happens if we add stones without detect corners we click add stones and you can see that right here mm, that doesn't look very good does it um, overlapping stone there yeah not very good um, here overlapping stone boy that isn't very good and the same thing over here overlapping stone so yeah that's not gonna work for us very well at all so what we need to do is choose detect corners and then when I click add stones now you can see I get perfect corners no overlaps and it looks spot-on perfect right well there is another option that I wanted to point out to you um, and that is if we don't have detect corners checked if we hold down the alt key and click on add stones gives us the exact same result as if we were using detect corners all the time and I typically will use my alt keys when I want to detect corners um, rather than just leave that on all the time it's a matter of personal preference however you like to work I'm not gonna argue with you okay so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and select the center object and choose add stones which we did add stones but I did not detect corners so let me hold down my alt key and choose add stones now we've detected our corners and the exact same thing to the outside here we're gonna choose add stones and over here to this uh, shape we're gonna choose add stones to it as well now now that we've done all that work this right here for the stitches you know we know that we want those to be red so let's go ahead and choose that and that is a separate part when we choose the detect corner options each part of our initial shape is broken which in this case works perfectly for us because we want to change this one and this one to red so I'm gonna choose light Siam and go ahead and choose rename and fill or I could choose add stones again either way so if I choose add stones it's just gonna delete the original stones and apply the new ones or I could choose rename and fill and get the same thing accomplished either way it doesn't matter however we like to work so now that we have that part done our baseball is pretty well done we do need to go to the view menu and look at wireframe you see all these center lines well obviously we don't want that as part of our output file so let's go ahead and select that and choose break stones that will remove the stones from their path and then we can select the entire design again and come to our selections tab and choose select defined paths now I will tell you I like to save these paths because we could scale this down so let's say I want to scale this down right I want to make a much smaller one I want to change my stone size and if I come back over here to choose add stones because we're adding stones to our new path look at there so now we have a little bitty baseball right and I can select these parts that are red so let me go ahead and do that quick and I can come in here and change my color back to crystal choose the rename and fill and boom now I got a little bitty baseball and a four inch baseball so by holding on to those paths um, and saving those we can resize the design do all kinds of different things and be able to produce different size designs very quickly especially when we're doing outlines like this alright so back to the view menu wireframe all of our lines are gone 
So now the next thing we really need to take a look at is any stones that are overlapping one another. Now initially, by looking at it, we can't tell if there are stones overlapping. So we select the whole design, click on our editing tab, and choose check spacing. So when we choose that by default, it's going to look for overlapping stones. You can see a progress bar down here at the bottom. It's going to say, hey, we have eight overlapping stones. Let's go ahead and delete those. So now we don't have stones on top of stones, and that's exactly what we want. Now when we did that, you can see that we get a little bit of shifting going on with the color of our stones. So like this one right here, I'm going to go ahead and go back to uh, Light Siam and choose the Stone tab, Rename and Fill. So now those are all red, just like they're supposed to be. Now the last thing that we really need to do, if we look at this stone, by default we have this black outline. I put that there because I think it's easier to see when we're doing our design rather than just the fill alone. But now we don't want those outlines, so we're going to right click on our little X to get rid of our outlines. Let's come in here. And now you can see all of the outlines have been gotten rid of. You might be asking, well, why get rid of the outlines? Well, what's going to happen is, is when we export this file to our vinyl uh, cutting software to make our template, it's going to look at the circle and the outline as two separate objects, so it's going to want to cut twice. And most of the time, I set up my cutter to cut twice, but I do that in my cut software rather than having an object with an outline defining a double cut. All right. So with that said, that's pretty much our baseball design. And you can see we have a, a little tiny baseball design if we want it as well. We just have to go through and uh, finish up uh, this design as well because if we go back here to the wireframe mode, you can see that we have the paths um, that we use to, from the bigger one to make the smaller one. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you learned a little bit of something special about CorelDRAW and that Smart Fill tool and some of the fun things we can do with it. And I encourage you to watch all of our quick start videos here because in each one has some neat uh, tools that we're going to be demonstrating inside CorelDRAW as well as some unique functionality here inside EasyStone. Um, so definitely watch all those quick start videos. I can't stress that enough because I'm telling you, if you watch those quick start videos and you, and you do them, you're going to find that you're going to get along with EasyStone a lot uh, easier than if you just start clicking buttons and, and hope something happens. So I appreciate you watching and watch the rest of these quick start videos and I hope you enjoy them. Thanks again.